What's up YouTube, Justin Fuller here, and today I'm outside of a 2022 Honda Civic Touring. Now this is the brand new 11th generation, so of course today we're gonna compare this to the previous 10th generation, and then what it stacks up against with today out there in the market. So let's hop on in. <laughs> what's underneath the hood of this 2022 Honda Civic. So let me pull you on in and we'll talk about it. So much like the 10th generation here, we're looking at a 1.5 liter turbo engine. Now this is putting out 180 horsepower. So you are getting an additional horsepower out of this engine. Now that is running to a CVT transmission, which is then pumping out to these 18 inch alloy wheels that you have on the exterior of the car. Now let's talk about some basic things that are underneath the hood, like reservoir for your windshield wiper fluid, right? Easy to access. Uh, we've got tanks over here as far as radiator fluid. I've got my air box coming across right here. I've got a fuse box living right here and then easy access to my terminals right there. Now I will point out that you do have a lot of auxiliary space running along the backside. So that way, if you wanted to run extra, extra lines to whatever it may be, amps, subs, things like that, you've got some space to work with in there. So something nice to know. Now, before we leave the front end, we should probably talk about things like horsepower. So I'm gonna do a horsepower comparison. So on the screen, I'm gonna go ahead and throw something up to show you how this car not only stacks up against the competition out there, but I'm also gonna put the previous generation Civic because you can really see how it stacks up against 10th generation. And then everything else in the market that is out there right now. All right guys, so before we leave the front end of this car, we should probably also talk about miles per gallon. So right now this 1.5 liter engine is putting out 31 in the city and 38 on the highway. So while we're looking and considering that, I wanna to talk to you about other vehicles that are out there in the, you know, in the market. And then of course, how does this stack up against the 10th generation? So I'm gonna throw that comparison up on the screen so that you can really understand for how this car changed and how it's stacking up against everything else out there. Now that you've looked at that, let's move on to the next topic. All right guys, so I think it's about time that we do a walk around on this vehicle and talk about some of the exterior features and additionally some of the safety features that this car offers. So let's come on in and we'll talk about this. So as we work our way around the outside, I'll start you at the mirrors. So the first thing I wanna point out is of course you do have breakaway mirrors and they do have the turn indicators, right? So they will break away. Now, additionally, on top of that, you do have the blind spot information system in this, right? So it will light up if there's something in your blind spot and if you start to get a blur, it will give you an audible alert. So that blind spot information system does live in this car. Now, from a profile view, I do wanna talk about airbags. I've got two front airbags. I've got two knee airbags. I've got two side airbags. I've got two rear airbags. And then I've got two full curtain airbags. So you're working with 10 airbags inside of this car. So a lot going on from that standpoint. Now, the car has what's called ace body structure. This is something that Honda has been working with for years. So I'm gonna wrap around to the front and kind of explain that. Now, how that works is it's designed to where the engine struts will drop so that the engine will fall out and not get pushed into the cabin. It also has crinkle zone as you wrap around the sides of the car to push all debris and anything else around the car, right? So we're trying to prevent everything from coming up into the car to hurt you or your passengers and move it out and around. So it's just something that Honda's designed they've been using for years. Now, while we're at the front, we should probably talk about this grill because that is a definite change from previous generations. And then that brow. I like this brow. I like these eyes. They have some attitude to them. You've got a full LED setup here. So LED daytime running lights, LED headlights, LED fog lights. Then you have auto on off high beam and auto on off headlights, right? So a full complete setup. It's stylish. It's kind of cool, right? Now you've got the honeycomb finish right down here. And then of course you do have down there your radar as far as Honda sensing goes. And then as we come up the windshield, you'll see your camera that's going to be working with a couple other features. So let's talk about those two features. So Using these features, you're gonna do have things like lane keep assist. Now lane keep assist is gonna use that camera up there. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna detect the lines on the road in front of you when you're going, let's say 45. So that way if you drift to the left or the right, it'll actually keep you centered in the lane. Now, the radar is gonna do a little bit different. It'll use that for adaptive cruise control or your collision mitigation braking system. So it's gonna bounce that radar off cars in front of it. So that way, if it's looking like you're gonna hit them, it can actually give you an alert and then apply the brakes. So that being collision mitigation braking, or if I have cruise control set on and the guy in front of me slows down to 55, it can keep designated spaces that I pick until I get out from behind him and then it'll take me back up to my speed, right? Not only does it have all that, but it has a low braking detection feature. I know this because when I ran this car through the car wash, I came up to the pads that were hanging down and what did it do? It immediately halted the car. So know that if you're pulling out of a drive-through, if you're pulling out of anywhere and somebody walks in front of you or something you know ends up being right in front of you, it will bring the car to a complete stop, even at low speeds. So a really cool feature. Now, as we wrap around the side, 
As I pointed out earlier, you do have these 18 inch alloy wheels on this vehicle. So a nice looking, you know, wheel. Uh, you've got four disc brakes, so both sides. Uh, body colored as far as your mirrors go and as far as your door handles go. It is smart key entry, so you can see the three ridges right here that I can lock it. And then of course I can pull if I have the keys in my pocket and it will unlock for me. Now hopping up top, you do have a moonroof in this vehicle. So if you're looking for that, you've got one here. And then working your way down, you do have the shark fin as far as your antenna goes. Now, as we come around the back of the car, You've got your full LED setup again. So LED brake lights, LED reverse lights, everything. Now it is badge touring, of course, and then it is badge Civic, and then your Honda emblem right there in the center. And a little bit off, of course, you've got your backup camera right there. So in my last two videos, I've actually climbed down into the trunk. I'm not gonna do it this time. But while I'm talking about those, if you wanna see the model below this, the EX, I'm gonna throw a link up at the top of the screen so that you can click on that. And that way you can check out a review of the EX and kind of what you would get if you climb up to this touring or if you drop down to that sport model below it, right? So just something to check out. And then a little bit later on, I'll throw you up a link so you can see the sport model too. So let's talk about what's in the trunk. So as I pull in here, the first thing I wanna point out is of course you do have the carpeted floor mats. Those always come standard with the car. Now in this model, you will find a 60-40 split, meaning that I can throw down a portion or a portion, right? And then I can decide which portion goes down. Now in here, of course, I do have my spare, my jack and all my accessories. So if I need to replace my tire, it does come with a spare. And then one of my favorite parts, this sweet tube right here. Have you ever decided to go camping, but you're a female and you wanted to pee, but you didn't want to have to crouch down or sit down or worry about falling down? Well, there's something called Go Girl. This is not it, but I highly encourage you to Google it. It's kind of funny, but it does make a lot of sense. Well, let's talk about what this is. So as I pull you into the gas cap, the first thing I wanna point out is it is capless, right? And I will point out that this is connected to the door locks. So if I have them unlocked, all I gotta do is press and it'll pop open. Now, because this is capless, there are some pluses and minuses, right? The plus being that I don't ever have to worry about not setting this on tight enough and setting off the check engine light inside. However, if I run out of gas, I need something to hold this open. That's where this sweet girl comes into play. I could put this in here, it'll hold that valve open to where I could pour gas down into the vehicle. So William, while it may not be a go girl, it still is pretty awesome. Brought to you by Honda. So before we leave the back end of this car, I wanna do a trunk comparison, right? So I wanna give you an idea for what this car compares against other vehicles out there in the market. So I'm gonna throw that up on the screen so that you can understand how this car stacks up against the other ones out there in the market. And then of course, I'll also throw up a comparison to the previous generation, which I wanna say is gonna be 0.3 inches. So not really anything to be worried about in case you find that sweet 2021 that is a great deal for yourself. Now, after you looked at that, let's hop inside the second row. Now you may be asking yourself, is that the sweet smell and feel of perforated leather, Justin? And the answer would be absolutely yes. When you land inside of the touring model, you will find leather. In previous generations, there was an EXL model, but that doesn't exist anymore. When you drop from this touring model down, you go to the EX model. Now, while I mentioned that, I wanna do something for you real quick. I wanna throw up what you would gain or lose if you drop down to that EX. And when I say gain or lose, I mean, how much money would I gain and keep in my pocket, but what items would I lose? So I'm gonna throw that up on the screen so that you can really understand, hey, if I wanna drop down models, what am I giving up and how much money am I saving? So take a quick look at that and then we'll start talking about these seats, right? So now that you've seen that, let's come on in and talk about this. So it is a nice material, right? I've got the perforation, if I can say that right, and then the standard leather setup, and then I've got kind of a two-tone look going over here on the side, depending on what color interior you have. I love that they've done black here. I would have liked black here too, just because where elbows and hands are gonna live, you're typically gonna get it dirty, And but they have done black here, and then you've got the shifter and the steering wheel that are additionally black. So it's the only place I would have liked to maybe seen that black land, but hey, let's be honest, it's not that big of a deal. Now, over here, you will notice that there are these cutouts right here, and that's for a part of those airbags that could pop out. Uh, so just be aware of that. And then you've, of course, got your, you know, your tweeter speakers here and some of your additionals as part of that Bose sound system that is going to be living inside of this car. So that is a first for Honda that they are now bringing in an actual name brand in previous years. I couldn't tell you what was in them because they kept it the best kept circuit known to man. Now, in the back, I will point out that you do have U, two USBs living right here. And then as you move up to the front, you'll have two additional USBs. So we got four USBs living inside of this car. Once again, they have given you a seat pocket here. But my God, if they won't give you two seat pockets in the back of a Honda, I don't know what you got to pay, but apparently it's more than the MSRP of 20000 or excuse me, $29,295. Now, before we leave the backseat of this car and I quit complaining about seat pockets that don't really matter, we should probably do a rear seat comparison. So as far as your leg room goes back here, I'm going to throw something up on the screen so you can understand how this car stacks against the other vehicles out there in the market. So I want you to take a look at that. And then after you've seen that and got an understanding for how they compare, let's hop into the front. All right, guys, so let's talk about the front row. So as I pull you in here, I just want to point out that, of course, you do have your eight-way powered seat up front here, right? Meaning that I can adjust front, back, up, down, and then I can have my 
back adjustment. You don't have a lower lumbar support, which is kind of bummer. I would think that in a 29,000 and change car, you might be able to get that. And then you do have the four-way powered seat on the other side. Now, I will remind you, if you drop down, you're not gonna have any of those features, which is kind of a bummer, but I did give you that option to see that EX, so know that that's what's blowing. Now, while I'm talking about that, I do wanna say that there is a sport model even below that. I have made a video on that. So if you wanted to check out the sport model, right now I'm gonna throw that up on the screen, a link so that you can click on that if you wanna see, hey, maybe I don't want the Touring, maybe I don't want the EX, maybe I wanna go down to that sport because it is a sporty look, but it is a better price point. So I'm gonna throw that link up there so that you can check it out. Now let's get into the first row. All right, so here we are in the front row. And the first thing I wanna do is just talk about leg space and give you a comparison, right? So I've got quite a bit of leg space here. So I pushed the seat all the way back just so you could really see how much actual leg space you could create. I mean, I can touch pedals, but I ain't great. So just so you can understand. But the big thing I wanna do here is just give you a comparison. So I'm gonna throw that up on the screen so you can see how this car stacks against some of the other cars out there in the market. Now, after you looked at that comparison, let's talk about what's behind you, which is this beautiful dash. So I'm gonna start you over here at the side and just kind of work you across. So once again, you can see where your elbows touch is always gonna be black, which I really do like, because you're just gonna get it dirty, right? And you've got the two-tone look going here, so it is a nice look. They kind of got this gloss plastic, which I could leave or take. And then you come across to this honeycomb finish, which is just a good look, right? It hides your air vents, so it's a nice look. It's clean, it, it, you know, it's just a little bit more sleek is how I would say it. And then they've raised up the screen here, much like the Accord, uh, you know, has previously done. So it's a little bit higher up so that when you're looking across over to the road, it's a, a shorter glance down. Now, as you come fully across, this is where things start to get really awesome. And I just wish they would have done this in all the models. You have a full digital display here. So as you, as you move anything around over here or you move anything around over here, you have this full display that you can use to your advantage, giving you the analog and digital display as far as your miles per gallon, or excuse me, miles per hour or kilometers an hour, right? So we'll go over that here in just a second. And then as you wrap back around, you can see that I have the honeycomb finish over here as well. And then all of my, what I call, you know, quick access buttons, you know, my windows, my window locks, door locks and then you can see my trunk releases right here and then i've got a hood release back down here in the corner so let's walk through the dash buttons all right so right down here you've got three buttons that we should talk about the first being parking sensors those make a lot of sense they're on the front and rear of the vehicle it'll give you alerts and i'll show you that here in a little bit when we pull up that backup camera now next to that is vehicle st stability assist so this works with your traction control so in the event that you go into a skid it'll transfer power to whichever wheel is getting better traction to help correct for that skid now this next button is going to be related to honda sensing so when i press this button you're going to see this screen appear up here now on the screen i can then scroll down so right now you can see it's showing road departure mitigation and then i can scroll on to blind spot information low speed braking controls and then collision mitigation braking so let's talk about what these different features are the first being road departure mitigation right so if it's looking like you're going to drive off the shoulder of the road the car can give you an audible alert and then shake the wheel to be like hey wake up pay attention maybe you're getting drowsy really cool feature you can always turn it on and off so know that you have the ability to do that with any of these features i'm showing you now the next one down is going to be your blind spot information system i talked about that earlier that's where you have the icon in the mirrors uh, that will light up when somebody's in your blind spot and it'll give you an audible alert if you start to try and get over uh, if there's a vehicle there. Now, also, you can turn that one on and off as well. Now, the next one, low speed braking system. This is the one I mentioned earlier where I was pulling into the uh, the, the wash uh, for this vehicle and the, the deals were hanging down that, you know, they run across it and it saw them and it actually brought the car to a complete stop. So it's just designed in case somebody runs out in front of you or something happens, you know, you're a bank or somebody walks out from behind a car in a parking lot to help protect you from hitting them and to protect them, right? So a really cool feature that this has and it works for the front and back of the vehicle. So it's cool that it does it both ways. And then next, collision mitigation braking. So this is like if I'm driving down the highway and it's looking like I'm going to rear and somebody first, an audible alert, then it'll flash in the dash and then it'll actually start to apply the brakes to help prevent the accident. So really cool safety features that this car offers. Uh, and that button that you saw down there, easy access to quickly get to these, right? Now, as we come up, we should probably just talk about the steering wheel and then these controls that you see back here that kind of work off of it. So let's start on the left side and talk about that. So on your left side over here is going to be primarily audio. So as I scroll through up here, I've got some different screens that I can get to, right? So I'm going to get to Bluetooth, USB, you know, Sirius XM, which you get for 90 days, uh, AM, FM, uh, and then of course my phone, and then I have a back button, right? So just easy to bring it back to just a general tachometer, and then I can have it display whatever I want in the middle or nothing in the middle. And then you can see that I have my temperature and that, that I'm currently in park, right? So you've got a good amount going on here with your clock, right? So easy enough to understand what I've got as far as your audio options through the car, right? FM, AM, Sirius XM, USB that I can plug like a thumb drive into, or I could plug in, you know, maybe it's a device. Uh, and then of course Bluetooth, uh, and then when you click on apps, it, you know, it's, it's not really giving you a, a lot of options unless you have like Android Auto or something pulled up, right? You have to be using something for that to make sense. So that's just what that is, right? And then customized display. This just allows you to like hide, uh, you know, if there, there's certain ones like you're like, I don't ever listen to AM. Let me go ahead and turn that one off so it doesn't even appear there. That's the function of this. The only thing I don't like about when you get any of these, these uh, menus is that you have to scroll all the way back up to the top and go to the back button. You can't just hit a quick back button. So that's kind of a bummer, but you know, hey, that's not a big thing to really complain about. Now, over here, uh, before we leave over here, I'll just point out that if you want 
to jump between tracks and then if you want to change your volume, right? And how I was scrolling through those menus is as you can see, you know, when I hit this and I roll it, you can see it rolling up here with me, right? So just you can understand how that works. And then you just press down to select something. So easy enough to use. Now over here on the right side, this is where some of those additional Honda sensing features are going to come into play, right? So this is where earlier I talked about adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist. So this first button right here is going to be for lane keep assist. So when I press this button, you're going to throw these lines on right here. So when I'm going down the road, if I'm going over 45 miles an hour, it's going to use that camera that's up here to detect those lines on the road. So this way, if I start to drift a little bit to the left or the right, can actually correct for me and keep me centered in that lane. So a fantastic feature. It uses that with also what's called traffic jam assist, which has just been brought over from the Acura side of the family, uh, which is that exact same description, right? That it can keep you centered in your lane while you're driving down uh, through traffic. So that's kind of what this is. Whether they want to brand it one thing or the other, that's what it does and how it works. Now, the other thing I have is adaptive cruise control. So I would get up to my speed and I, was, I would press this, right? And you're going to see this icon come up right here. And then, okay, now I would have, you know, set my speed, right? I'm not going anywhere yet and I don't have my seatbelt on, so it's not going to set the speed. But once it does, it'll hold, right? Now, from there, I could then press this button right here. Now, when I'm pressing this button, you're going to see these boxes appear. Now, the more boxes, meaning the more space it's going to keep between me and the car in front of me. So if, if I'm going 65 and I come up on another car, it's going to keep designated space and it'll actually slow my car down. Now, once I get around them, it'll take me back up to my speed until I come up on the next car and then it's going to determine based off of what amount of space I've determined here. And all I got to do is keep pressing that button, which I'm pressing right here, to create or reduce that space, right? So now if you're thinking to yourself, hey, that's cool and all, but what if I just want classic cruise control? Well, if you press and hold this button, it'll actually flip over and it'll say cruise mode selected, or I can press and hold again. And now we're back to adaptive cruise control. So that's kind of a rundown of the steering wheel. Now behind your steering wheel, you do have paddle shifters so you can affect the positive and minus shifting of this car. Now it is a CVT, so you don't have like six gears or nine gears, but it does give you more control over the performance base of the car. And while we're talking about performance base, I do want to point out something new to this. They have drive modes now to where I can hit this and you'll see like first one, sport mode, right? So it's going to rev at a higher RPM, give me more get up and go, uh, but I am going to give up some of that gas mileage, so that 31 in the city and 38 on the highway, it will affect that. If I press that drive mode down, cool graphic. It's going to take me back to normal. And then if I press one more down, it's going to take me econ. Now econ is the opposite of sport mode, right? I'm going to give up some of that give, you know, that, that get up and go, but I'm going to get better gas mileage in the car. Now in doing so, it is going to affect, you know, how much power I have off the accelerator and your AC unit. Now to show you that, what I'm going to do is crank this way up and I'll show you how this works. So if I have it in normal and I crank this sucker all the way up, you can hear it. And then it dims down. So hopefully you can hear that. I know that's probably hard to tell via audio, but we'll give it a shot, right? So that's how this works and, and what these do, right? So easy enough to understand. Now back here, of course, I have my lighting controls. So auto on off headlights, my fog light controls, and then on the other side, my windshield wiper controls right there. All right, guys, so let's talk about the touchscreen inside of this vehicle, right? So they've done some really good things and I think they've done kind of a disservice to people as well. So I'm gonna just kind of walk you through and explain some things as we go. So the first thing is all apps, right? So this just shows me everything that I have available to me in case there's things I wanna turn on and off. So just something to be aware of. Now, while we're talking about general things like that, I do wanna point out that you can hold and then you can start moving stuff around here. So it does give you the ability to not only move it around, but also drop it down into these quick connects, which I've done here, right? So you can see that if I wanted to drag this, I could grab this, drag it over to here, and then replace what's ever there. Now that's what's currently there, but I just wanna show you how that works. So I'm gonna hit done right there. Now, so we have a general understanding of, hey, I can immediately start to customize it a little bit. So Bluetooth audio, just that. Once I've connected up my phone, I can press this, and then I'll be able to access, you know, connect to device or go to device list, in which case then I could select whatever device I've connected to the car or add a new device, right? So this is if I were to want to stream music off my phone wirelessly, right? Easy enough. Now, smartphone connection, this would be, if I'm plugged in, I would have access to go maybe to my phone and then I can access Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So this is going to give the ability to do a lot of different things. Now, immediately it pulls up my Google Maps, but I've got a lot of different features here that I can take advantage of. Spotify, YouTube Music, my messenger, I can jump back to Honda, my calendar. So a lot of things that you can do here. Now, what it's prompting me right here is actually a really cool feature. In the event that I get in a car accident and the airbags deploy, Honda can call me if I don't answer. They can then use this to reach out to the um, EMS to let them know, hey, here's the last uh, you know, known location of this vehicle. Um, you know, Do you want to go look for them here at your make, model, and color so they can? So obviously I would turn that on because it's 100% free. So a lot of different features that you can access here. Now, if you're curious about what some of those features are and what apps you have available to, one, I can throw 15 of the most popular ones up on the screen. So know that you can always look at that. But also, I want to do something additionally here. If you go into the Android Auto app, you can actually select in there under the settings and it will show you some of those features. Now, because I'm connected up right now, I can't do that. But know that you can simply click on the app, open it up, and it'll give you, you know, access to a menu that'll let you pick from features that you can download that are currently available to you. So it makes life a lot easier from that standpoint. 
Now, let's jump back out of that. So, what related to Android Auto, the big function of this for a lot of people is that, hey, I can use my own mapping systems if I don't want to use the built-in navigation that Honda offers, and I have access to all my music, whether it be Spotify, Pandora, YouTube, whatever it may be, or music just saved to your phone. So that's kind of the purpose of this, of hey, I just want to be able to plug in my phone, listen to my music, get my maps pulled up, and move down the road. So very simple setup as far as that goes. All right, so moving out of that, let's talk about the trip computer. Now, under the trip computer, it's just as simple as you can see them up in the dash, or I can see them right here on the screen. So if I'm taking a long trip, I can look at trip A, trip B, my current drive, right? So very easy to access this and understand it. Now, moving away from that, of course, I have Sirius XM for 90 days. So obviously you can take advantage of that. And then I would highly encourage you to wait until they offer you a sweet deal if you really want it, because they will cut down the price dramatically. Now, your navigation system right here is, I believe, still built through Garmin, right? So you have this available to you. But for the most sake, I think a lot of people are probably going to use Google Maps or Waze or Apple Maps, just whatever they're comfortable with, just because eh, it's great and all, but I'd rather use something that I'm comfortable with that I maybe have addresses saved in and all of that. Now, as, as far as access in the phone, car has Bluetooth, right? So I'd be able to access all my contacts, all of those things, my recent, most, you know, recent calls, favorite contacts, keyless, all that kind of normal things that you would expect out of a Bluetooth list. And then of course, FM and AM, I'll pop this on here real quick. You do have that and then you do have HD stations. So I'll just point that out, right? So if you wanna take advantage of those, know that you have them available to you. Now, as we scroll over another screen here, general settings. So this is gonna be, you know, just some, uh, hey, let me hop in here and I wanna change general basic stuff, right? So smartphone connection, right? Maybe I wanna to check to make sure Android Auto is enabled, right? Or I wanna come in here to Apple CarPlay and go, oh, I wanna add a new device, an iPhone uh, that's my daughter's or my wife's or whoever. So very easy to understand as far as working through that, right? So a lot of different things here related to like general connections, the display as far as, you know, hey, I need more contrast, any brightness, dimness, that sort of thing. Uh, I can access all of that info right here. So easy enough to understand for your general settings. Now under vehicle settings, this is gonna be where you're, you're gonna affect things like meter setups. Uh, and now what I really like that they've done this year is that you can actually, it gives you a visual, right? It just makes it easier to understand because some people are gonna see TPMS and go, I don't know what the hell that is, Justin, but it's a tire pressure monitoring system. And this would be the, the, the button you could go to to calibrate that, right? Or keyless access. This is where I can hop into those door lock modes that I bring up in some of my other videos, right? So right now, the way this car is set up, driver's door only. That means when I walk up with the key, if it's in my pocket and I touch the door, it's only going to unlock the driver's door. Some people like to unlock all the doors. So that way the other person on the other side of the car will be able to get in too. And you could change it that easy, right? So very easy to change that, right? So a lot of different things here as far as turning beeps on and off, the, the flashing lights, uh, you know, when you lock the doors, just different things like that. So very easy to access some of those features. Now driver assist system, this is going to be all of those Honda sensing features. So whether you want to set, you know, braking distances further or closer, uh, alerts to beep on and off, those kind of things you can play with all of this stuff right here. So backing out of that screen, your lighting setup, obviously you can jump into this and play with your, you know, your lights as far as like how long lights stay off or stay on when you get out of the car and different things like that. So easy enough to understand a lot to play with, right? Door and window is probably the most commonly used one. Now right here, auto door unlock. So this means that uh, when I hit 10 miles an hour, it'll automatically lock the doors. If I want to change that to, you know, when I shift out of park or I want to turn it off, I can right there. And the other side of that is what I'm getting out of the car, right? So auto door, uh, you know, unlock. So right now it's set up to where when I open the driver's side door, it then unlocks the remaining doors of the car. I typically change this. Let's say when I shift to park that way everyone can get out of the car and they're not fumbling around looking for the lock trying to get out of the vehicle so it just makes a lot of sense for that feature now the last one is walkway auto lock i still don't understand why honda doesn't just make this a default on function it makes so much sense now what that function is that i just turned on means that if i get out of the car and i have the keys with me and i get halfway into the grocery store and i go oh my god i don't know if i locked it and i have my laptop on the front seat the minute you get outside of 10 feet and you have the keys with you it'll automatically lock the doors so walk away auto lock it's under door and window right easy enough to understand so if you want to know how to get to all these settings again let's just back out real quick you're gonna to go to vehicle settings right here once you're under vehicle you're gonna go over to door and window and that'll bring up all these right so probably the most commonly changed ones are gonna be right here so jumping back out of that all right so as we move across here usb right i've got four usbs in the car so i can plug like a thumb drive in uh, and be able to pull music off of that now in previous generations this is the one, some of the things i don't like you could plug that thumb drive put images in and then make custom images that went on the screen and do some different things so there is a lot of customization that has left this car uh in moving into this new generation now if you want to see what some of that looks like and some of the customization you could done, could have done i'll throw you the tips and tricks video i made up for the previous generation the 2021 civic so i'll throw that up on the screen so that you can check that out and kind of understand hey if i go with the 21 what can i do that's different as far as the touchscreen goes because maybe this matters to you maybe it doesn't but check out those tips and tricks and then you can decide for yourself now honda link you just saw one of the examples of what it offers as far as hey in the event that you get an air uh, a wreck your airbags deploy 
Honda can call you. If you don't answer, they can send someone out looking for you. Now, in addition, there's features such as like, hey, being able to start the car from the phone or being able to control the door locks from the phone. And depending on the trim level of the car and what type of car you ultimately end up buying, whether it's a Accord, a Civic, you know, a Pilot, a, you know, Passport, whatever it may be, they, they will have options. If you want to check that out, just go to hondalink.com and you can learn a little bit more about it. Now, this is a new feature that I like that Honda's added. And it's a, it's called a smart shortcut. And basically what it does is it starts to recognize different things that you do and gives you options up here as far as buttons go. Now, I would have loved if they just did it like Kia and Hyundai does, where they give you the option to literally put a button there that is just whatever you want right? It could be any shortcut to anything, right? Because I just think that's a really cool idea. But based off this is what it's going to do is based off your listing, your navigation, kind of how you move through things, it'll throw up that option for you so that you could jump to that. So still a cool idea, but I just wish it had a little bit more customization. Now moving across display mode, right? So this is going to be your dimmer, right? As far as brightening and dimming the car, right? Easy enough to understand and jump over to. And then down here in the other models of this vehicle, these would be buttons, but in this car, it's going to be touchscreen down here too, right? So as far as accessing your navigation, your phone, your FM, right? And these you can customize, right? Just so I mentioned earlier, you know, I could grab this and then drop it down into something over there if I wanted. So you can do that. So it's cool that they have given you that. I like that that exists in the car. So that's the touchscreen. The pluses are very easy to use, very simple. They've made the menu a little bit easier to work through. The minuses are that, hey, you kind of given up a lot of the customization as far as you know throwing up different screens and changing the uh the, the whole layout of it you know the all these different customization things that you may want or maybe you don't care about in which case hey this is a great option and take advantage of it so all right let's talk about the center stack moving down so as you come down of course you see that you have your ac controls here and they are dual moded meaning i control left and right so i don't think i really need to explain that too much and then below that i've got you my usbs and then down in here if you can see it i do actually have a wireless phone charger now i will remind you that if you use like one of the magnet style uh deals i had to take mine off to get it to work so that's kind of a bummer but it does live in here and i do like that they put in these little ridges on the side to where it won't slide around too much so it's kind of cool that that works that way now as we move across of course you do have the shifter right here uh, and then of course i can do move through my modes my leds reverse neutral and drive so let's talk about that backup camera so let me pull that up and show you what we got here so on the backup camera i've got three different views right here right so i've got a wide angle, a normal angle, and then aim straight down if I'm backing up to something else. Now, this car does offer cross traffic monitoring, meaning that if somebody's coming from the left or right, it'll give me an auto alert and throw arrows up on the screen to let me know, hey, there's somebody coming from this direction. Meaning that if I'm pulling out of like a, uh, you know, in between two big SUVs and I can't see, this will help me out. And then of course, this car does have parking sensors on the front and back of the vehicle. So if I start to back up something, it'll give me those beeps, that audible alert, that beep, 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 you know, that you kind of expect exactly what a parking sensor is, right? So know that you have that to take advantage of as far as the three different views, the cross shaffing monitoring and the the, uh, the parking sensors on the front and back of the vehicle now as we move down of course you have your cup holders right here and of course you have your parking brake which is electronic you can set that i've got brake hold which will you know hold the brake while i'm in drive so a very simple feature uh, I, I talk about in every single car it, it's just simply for stopping no traffic right so it'll allow me to leave the car in drive and it'll hold the brake so i can release my foot from it without rolling anywhere right so it's just a nice feature to know that you can have now past that you do have the idle stop start which is right here if i have this feature engaged uh, it'll let me know when i turn it on or off up here and what that does is it, it essentially just allows me to when i come up to a stop Light. What it's designed to do is turn the engine off, but leave the less of the electronics and the AC on while I'm in the car to help improve gas mileage. But I'm not a huge fan of it because it, there is that little bit of lag when it has to kick back on the engine and then you take off to go. So I wish that you could just turn this off completely. But if you want to turn it off every time you crank up the car, you're gonna have to press this button. So yeah, I could probably lose that one and be quite okay with that. Now up above, you do have your auto dimming mirror with your buttons right here. So hey, Justin, uh, so you can connect your, your gate clicker, garage clicker, all those different deals. So you can see it light up when I did it. And, and when you're connecting it, you really just hold your garage clicker until it like starts flashing or turn solid and then press one of these and I'll typically program it. And then above that, you know, your normal buttons as far as your, your moonroof, if I want to send that back and open that sweet sucker up here, which it looks like it's about to rain, so I'm probably not going to do that. And then just my sunglasses holder right there. All right, guys, so we did it. We made it all the way through the 2022 Honda Civic Touring. So before we talk about a full review of this vehicle and go back through all those comparisons, I just want to remind you of some basics to the car. Right now, a lot of these cars, because of the chip shortage, you are only getting one key, and they are typically giving out a Wii so just something to be aware of if you go in. They're not trying to pull shenanigans. That is really something that you're running into. And then I want to talk about warranties real quick. This car comes with a three-year, 36,000-mile warranty on it, so that's what you would call your base coverage or most people call bumper to bumper coverage. It also comes with three years or 36,000 miles of roadside assistance. And then you get five years or 60,000 miles on your powertrain coverage. So that's standard from Honda. Anything else that you would get beyond that is probably going to be a third party warranty that they're offering, whether it's direct through Honda or through a third party offering, right? Now, related to that, let's talk about the car and move back to it. So the first thing I want to do is revisit all of those things that we talked about earlier as far as the comparisons. So let's start at the front of the car and we'll work our way to the back. The first being horsepower, you get 180 horsepower in this vehicle. And I'm going to throw that back up on the
on the screen so you can see how this car stacks up against the other vehicles out there in the market. Now, after we looked at that, that we should probably talk about miles per gallon. This car gets 31 in the city and 38 on the highway. So it's a little bit different from the previous generation. I want to see you're squeaking out a couple extra miles per gallon, but I'm going to throw you up a comparison so you can understand how this car stacks up against not only the 10th generation, but also those other vehicles out in the market that you would typically see against this car. Now, after we've talked about that, let's talk about that front row legroom again. So I'm going to throw that comparison up on the screen so you can understand how this car stacks against other vehicles out there in the market as far as your front row leg space. Now, moving out and what's past you is in your passenger. So we should talk about that second row in the leg space. So I'm going to throw that comparison up on the screen so you can understand, hey, how does this car stack up? How much leg space am I going to have if I buy this car for my passengers? In case you got kids, in case you just have a lot of friends who are constantly in the car, in case you're that guy who always is driving to every event, right? So moving past that, let's go to the very back of the car and talk about the cargo or trunk space. So I'm gonna throw that up on the screen so that you can understand how that stacks up as far as what do I got and how does it compare to other vehicles out there on the market. Now, after that, the one thing I will say about this car is it's bright, it's brand new, it's shiny. I like that they've lifted this up as far as the touchscreen goes so that I can see a little bit better. I do like that they've changed this and they have simplified it, which does make it a lot better for probably the average person. But if you're looking for really hardcore customization, I don't necessarily care for that. The overall look of the exterior of the car, I think it is a nice looking vehicle. They have added extra airbags in the car. So as far as safety goes, you are notching it up from there. So it is a cool feature. Now they've added that full digital display in the dash, which is superb and it's just cool looking. I would love to see that land in all of the trims of the car, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. Take what you can get. If you want to spend $29,295 MSRP on a Honda Civic, then hey, you can get this. If not, you could drop down to that, that Civic Sport, uh, or excuse me, that EX below, which I threw the link up, and I'll throw a link at the end of this video so you can check out that if you want to see my review on that one as well. Now, with all of that said, would I buy this car? Maybe, but if I could find a 2021 for a great deal, would I maybe consider it if a touring came up? Yeah, absolutely I would. So just kind of depends on what you prefer and what you want. But I want to make you aware of how this car stacked up against the 10th generation then how it stacks up against what's currently out there in the market. Now, with all of that blubbering I just said, I have a few favors to ask you. One, press the like button, dude or gal or whatever pronoun that you prefer. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside when you let me know that I'm doing a good job. If you don't think I'm doing a good job or you just like to spread additional positivity out there in the world, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Did I miss something? Is there something you wish I would have went over? Or hey, did I mess something up, right? Did I give an improper fact or something that was wrong? I might have, I'm a human. I make mistakes like everyone else, but leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I hope that you'll tell me something funny. And if nothing else, leave me a dad joke. I love them. Hey, you wanna know a dad joke while we're here? Why don't I tell you one? What do you call a man with no arms, no legs, and a hole? Phil. Learned that one yesterday. It's a pretty terrible joke, but I like it. Okay, so like the like the video, leave a comment. Uh, three, uh, you should probably share this with your friends and your family and anybody else who's in those forums with you or those Facebook groups that's looking to learn about this car and how it stacks up against what else is out there in the market. Whether they're looking to shop around or maybe they just wanna know, or maybe they just might like my sense of humor. I don't know. So like the video, subscribe to the channel. That would be my fourth one. Please subscribe to the channel. Let me tell you about Hondas. Let me tell you how, how they stack up against other cars. And let me throw a little bit of weird humor at you every once in a while, right? So hopefully you'll do that. Let me tell you about Hondas. Let me teach you something. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it, and let it go!